And it would give us more perspective in terms of why this mission is so important and where at this moment the space probe, of course, stands. We're being joined by Mr. Manish Prohit, who's a former ISRO scientist. He's joining us live on this broadcast. Uh, Mr. Prohit, this, this is a key moment for Chandrayaan-3, isn't it? I mean, when Chandrayaan-2 um, was about to touch the surface of the moon, everyone across the length and breadth of India was watching with bated breath. We're now towards the last lap of Chandrayaan-3. Tell us how crucial the next few days are going to be. Good evening, Mohammed. Uh, yeah, these days are really crucial because now the journey is completely, totally on Vikram. So right now, Vikram Lander is doing some tests. So what is going to happen in the next few days will be we will be checking the engines, the sensors, the subsystems of the Vikram lander because now the journey is completely, totally has to be taken up by Vikram, the lander. So what will happen in the next few days will be we will be going around the moon and we will be gradually decreasing the orbit, gradually approaching the surface. And on the fateful day, on 23rd, we will be when at 30 kilometers above the surface of the moon, then we will start the power descent. Before that, we have two D boosts. D boosts, what they will do, they will reduce the energy of the spacecraft and gradually it will result in reduction of the orbit. So gradually the distance will come down and it will be eventually 300 kilometer by 100 kilometer orbit on 23rd. And there, the main 18 minutes, those crucial 18 minutes will come in the picture. And there we will be having at a speed of around 1,683 meters per second. At that time, at that moment, that will be the speed with which Chandrayaan-3 lander, Vikram lander, will be cruising. And right. we have to gradually bring it down to just to have a soft landing on the lunar surface. Absolutely indeed. Now, Mr. Purot, you know, we've been talking about soft landing on the surface of the moon. Only three other nations have done it before India. The United States, the former Soviet Union and China. And India, if it is successful, will only be the fourth nation to accomplish this feat. You know, for people who are not familiar with why this is important, give us a sense as why it is so crucial for India to make this soft landing on the surface of the moon. Uh, see, first of all, uh, on the South Pole, this is going to be the first one. If Luna, Luna 25, that is planning the soft landing on 21st of August, so probably they might be the first one if they do that on that day. And right. we will become the second nation to do the soft landing on the lunar south pole. Now, why the lunar soft landing is so important? So, you know, just to put in a perspective, on Earth, we have atmosphere. So we can use the drag of the air, the resistance of the air we can use. Recently, you, you might have seen that we have done a drop and parachute test for our Gaganyaan modules. Because here, the air will also provide some resistance to us. But then on moon, there is no atmosphere at all. So what all you have to do, you have to kill the energy. You have to reduce the speeds by burning thrusters. So completely and totally, you are dependent on the engines. They have to fire properly. Your orientation has to be maintained. That's what happened last time. Last time in Chandrayaan 2, during the camera costing phase, when we were clicking the picture of the lunar terrain to you know, match up with the onboard pictures, to be just on the safer side, okay, fine, the landing spot is just right there and you have to reach there. There, the thruster firing, you know, did some miscalculations and right. the orientation was not exactly the way it was supposed to be. And then errors kept on accumulating, accumulating. And finally, we were not at that point, at that spot where we were supposed to be at that Absolutely. moment. And that's resulted in that big failure. Absolutely, indeed. And also my last quick question to you, Mr. Purohit, how, how likely and how much work has ISRO put in that we will be successful this time around? So uh, if you put in, in the words of Somnath, sir, uh, our chairman is wrong. So this lander is going to land on moon, whatever happens. So because, you know, what we have done, uh, we have approached this design with, you know, taking in account all the possible failure options. So it is kind of a failure prone design. We are not we are not looking into any part and assuming, OK, fine, this can't go wrong. No, no, no. We have taken care in the design, in the testing, in the simulation. On ground, everything has been tested and made sure that we should not miss any part, whether it is algorithm, software, sensors, uh, telemetry, telecommand, whatever it is, thrusters, engines, everything, everything has been beefed up. Even we have taken care of one small aspect that is, there is, uh, you know, reaction wheels are there on the craft that control the orientation. We call it right. attitude. Those attitude control reaction wheels 
they have been beefed up their power has been more than doubled because right. if in case the situation happens that happened in the last time when the orientation was not proper then we will have a quick maneuvering to get back into into the particular orientation and land wherever we are absolutely indeed we hope that that is exactly how things go according to plan thank you very much indeed mr prohit for joining us and getting us all those insights there thank you Vion is now available in your country download the app now and get all the news on the move